when the spirit of the Lord is upon me, I will jump like David jumps. When the spirit of the Lord is upon me, I will jump like David jumps. And I will jump, I will jump, I will jump like David It is he who will tread down our enemies who sing and shout his victory. Yah is king for our eyes won the victory and set his people free. His word has slain the enemy. The earth shall stand and see that through our Yah we shall divinely. It is he who will tread down our enemies, will sing and shout his victory. Yah is king for our eyes, won the victory and set his people free. His word has slain the enemy, the earth shall stand and see that through our eyes we shall do valiantly. It is he who will tread down our enemies, will sing and shout his victory. Yah is king for our eyes, won the victory and set his people free. His word has slain the enemy, the earth shall stand. Shout his victory. Yah is king. Yah is king. Yah is king. Hallelujah. 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 We bless your name, O oh God. Hallelujah. glorify your name. We honor you, Lord, and with our voices we proclaim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord. We, bless your name, Lord. we worship you. Let me hear your war cry. Hallelujah. Let me hear your war cry. Let me hear your war cry. As you enter in, come blow the shofar, play the tambourine. Everybody shout loud and sing. Prepare for war. It's not by power, not by might that we fight. We're soldiers walking in the light. That's who we are. Come play your guitars, make it out on the drums. Come dance before the Holy One. Prepare for war. Yahweh. Shout, Yahweh. Our 
Arise, O children of the Most High, let me hear your war cry. As you enter in, come blow your shofars, play the tambourines. Everybody shout loud and sing, prepare for war. It's not by power, not by might that we fight. Soldiers are walking in the light. That's who we are. Come play your guitars, make it loud on the drum. Come dance before the Holy One. Prepare for war. Yahweh has won the victory. 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 Yahweh has won the victory.
won the victory. Hallelujah. Even a shallow I like him. Even a shallow I like him. Even a shallow I like him. Even a shallow, shallow, shallow I like him. Even a shallow. Even a shallow, I let him. Even a shallow, I let him. Even a shallow, 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 I let him. Even a shallow, I let him. Even a shallow, I let him. Even a shallow. Shalom, 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 I let him. We bring you greetings, yes, you are. We bring you greetings, yes, you are. We bring you greetings, yes, you are. Heaven is shalom, 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 I let him. Heaven is shalom, I let him. Heaven is shalom. Shalom, shalom, shalom Aleichem Even in shalom Aleichem Even in shalom Aleichem Even in shalom Aleichem Even in shalom, shalom, shalom Aleichem Even in shalom Aleichem Even in shalom Aleichem Even in shalom Heaven is shalom, 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 Alec. We bring you greetings, Yeshua. We bring you greetings, Yeshua. We bring you greetings, Yeshua. Heaven is shalom, 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 Alec. Heaven is shalom, Alec. Heaven is shalom, Alec. Heaven is shalom, Alec. Heaven is shalom, 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 Alec. Heaven is shalom, Alec. Heaven is shalom, Alec. Heaven is shalom, Alec. Heaven is shalom, 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 Alec. Heaven is shalom, Alec. Heaven is shalom, Alec. Heaven is shalom, Alec. Heaven is shalom, 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 Alekhem. Come, let us go up into the mountain of the Lord, into the house of the Yaakov. Come, let us go up into the mountain of the Lord, into the house. Into the mountain of the Lord, into the house of the Ark, Yaakov. Come, let us go up into the mountain of the Lord, into the house of the Ark, Yaakov. Halle, hallelujah, Lord. Let us go up 
into the mountain of the Lord, into the house of the Yaakov. Come, let us go up into the mountain of the Lord, into the house of the Yaakov. You shall go out with joy, feel it forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy. All the trees of the fields will clap, will clap their hands. All the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands. As you go out with joy, you shall go out with joy. Feel it forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy. All the trees of the fields will clap, will clap their hands. All the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands. As you go out with joy. All the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands. As you go out with joy, you shall go out with joy. Feel it forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy. All the trees of the fields will clap, will clap their hands. All the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands as you go out with joy. All the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands as you go out with joy. You shall go out with joy. Feel it forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy. All the trees of the fields will clap, will clap their hands. All the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands as you go out with joy. All the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands as you go out with joy. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah, shout to the Lord. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah, shout to the Lord. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Shout to the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, shout to the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, dance to the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, dance to the Lord, somebody dance, dance, dance to the Lord most high. Somebody dance, dance to the Lord most high. Hallelujah, hallelujah, dance to the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, dance to the Lord. I will dance to the Lord most high. I will lift up my voice and shout. I will sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, Yeshua is Lord, Yeshua, 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 Yeshua is my King forever, Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. Yeshua, Yeshua is my King forever, yeah. 
dance, dance to the king. Lift your voice, shout and sing. Dance, dance, dance to the king. Lift your voice, shout and sing. Shout Hosanna, Hosanna, Hoshiyanu Adonai, Hoshuanu Adonai, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hoshiyanu Adonai, Hashiyanu. Adonai Yeshua, Adonai Elohim, Adonai Yeshua, Adonai Elohim, Hallelujah as we sing. truth shall set you free for out of zion comes your deliverer in the year of jubilee oh hallelujah oh hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord oh hallelujah oh hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord oh hallelujah oh hallelujah hallelujah Lord, oh hallelujah, oh hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah, 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 slumber and the truth shall set you free for out of zion comes your deliverer 
in the year of Jubilee. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands as you go out with joy. All the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands as you go out with joy. Hallelujah! You are welcome. If you haven't, you can come and just look at it and see what it looks like, a real Torah scroll from ancient times. I've told you all before, we, it's survived from the Holocaust. We got it from a place in Poland. So if you want to come look, it has historical um, significance. Of course, it has biblical significance. And if you've never seen a Torah scroll opened, now's the time to see it as we sing this song one more time. All the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands as you go out with joy. All the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands as you go out with joy. All the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the field will clap their hands. Trees of the field will clap their hands as you go out with joy. We shall go out with joy, be lift forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy. All the trees of the fields will clap, will clap their hands. All the trees of the field will clap their hands. Trees of the field will clap their hands. Trees of the field will clap their hands as you go out with joy. All the trees of the field will clap their hands. Trees of the field will clap their hands. Trees of the field will clap their hands as you go out with joy. All the trees of the field will clap their hands. Trees of the field will clap their hands. Trees of the field will clap their hands as you go out with joy. Hallelujah, 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 hallel
Adonai is the master and king. Adonai, 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 Adonai is the master and savior. Adonai is the master and king. Adonai is the master and savior. Adonai is the master and king. Adonai is the master and savior. Adonai is the master and king. Adonai is the master and savior. Adonai is the master and king. Adonai is the master and king. Come on, someone give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It's always a treat to bring the Torah out. Some people don't understand it. Some people think, oh, you're worshiping it. We're not worshiping it. We're celebrating it. How many's ever gone to a game and you lift up your flag of your team and you do what with it? You wave it. You're excited about it. It seems that we have a problem Honoring things of God and not honoring the things of this world. We will stand for hours. We will shout and dance and stand on seats and paint our bellies different colors. And be embarrassed, to not be embarrassed about it at all. But when the Torah comes out, it gets kind of mystical. But it's not. It's, it's our everyday life of loving the Torah. I want to... Ex- Explain a little bit about it just in, in the next 15 minutes, promise. But I just want you to understand that during the Holocaust, um, the first thing that the uh, Nazis went after, of course, were Torahs, to rip them away from the Jewish people, which is a sign of ripping their belief away from them, were ripping their God away from them. And then you saw that, you know, I put it back and I walk backwards because you don't ever turn your back on God. And I know that's a scroll, but it represents who he is. So you never turn your back on him. And um, they would take those Torah and to, to kind of rub it in the face of the Jewish people, they would cut them up and make garments and make them wear it to defile the Torah. <clears throat> but how many know that God can turn some things around because what the, what the enemy wanted to defile, God actually gave to the Jewish people so they could read it while they were in captivity. Even though they were upset that that Torah was desecrated, at the same time when they would open up their garment, they would have the Torah there. They could read it. So uh, what the enemy used for evil... God gave them some very powerful tools to keep that word of God alive in their lives. So today we celebrate Yeshua. I know it's some Torah, which means that we seem to look like we're celebrating uh, the scroll, but we're not. We're celebrating the word of God. We're celebrating then Yeshua because the word that dwells among us is Yeshua. And today the Jewish people are displaying their gratitude for Elohim for for, um, giving us the great gift of his word. And we know that it's no accident that the enemy wants to attack them on the last day of Sukkot and Simchat Torah. But um, God's a supernatural God, has done supernatural things for Israel, and he will continue to do supernatural things for Israel, and he will continue um, to fight for them on every, every side. Um, and the only thing I can say, if this ushers in something that is prophetic, then it will usher in something that is prophetic. And if that's the case, then... God's still in control, but we still need to pray for those that are going through that tribulation and that persecution. We should have actually greater joy than the Jewish people because we understand that Yeshua HaMashiach is the word of Elohim. So if anyone is going to dance to recognize the word of God, it should be us because we recognize the Messiah is coming and saving us from our sins by um, accepting him. John Chapter 1 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Elohim, and the Word was Elohim. So when we look throughout the Tanakh and throughout the, actually the Gospels, 
Um, it is everything we need to live a righteous and long life. It is our instruction manual. It is our way to live so that we can have a life worth living, full of joy, full of peace, full of love, self-discipline. So this word is very powerful for us, and so it is guarded in the ark. You know, the <clears throat> when they um, created the temple and they took the ark of the covenant into the temple... Um, the Ark of the Covenant, and I think most Christians don't realize, it housed the Ten Commandments. Which means the Ten Commandments has always been a vital part of the Jewish people. Or should I say, a vital part of what God wanted them to follow. Because it's in the Holy of Holies. Which means the Ten Commandments are holy. Because remember, nothing is allowed in the Holy of Holies except that which is holy. So that means only God is in there. The ark is there that they have made and consecrated. And then the things that they put in the ark are there and they're holy. And so we find the Ten Commandments are holy. So that means the Ten Commandments or the Word of God or Yeshua has always been holy. He's pure. And because in the Word it is written that He is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life, then we celebrate. In Psalms 119.1, if you can pop that up for me, Kyle. Psalms 119.1. You probably know by heart Psalms 119. But in verse 1, and we're going to go to verse 1, and then we're going to go to verse 142, Kyle. In verse uh, 1, it says, How happy are those whose way of life is blameless. And then it tells you how that becomes. Who live by the what? <clears throat> Torah. Of Adonai. Now, as someone who's been taught that the Old Testament is done away with, we never did away with the Psalms. We did away with a lot of stuff, but we never did away with the Psalms because Psalms seems to be our helper sometimes, right? When we're in help, they tell you, go to Psalms, read Psalms. And then I find that when we read Psalms, I don't know why we didn't read this. Because he says to us that we're going to have long life and have a good life if we what? Follow the way. And the way is the Torah. So when he says, I am the way, what is he saying? I am the Torah. And understanding the truth in Psalms 119, 142, the scripture says, and I didn't give them a PowerPoint, so that's why we're waiting, so it's okay. Your righteousness is eternal righteousness, and your Torah is truth. So when he says, I am the way, he's saying, I am the Torah. And then when he says, I am the truth, he's saying, I am the Torah. And then he says, I am the life. And if we look at Deuteronomy 32, 47, and then also Proverbs 13, 14, <clears throat> Deuteronomy 32, 47, and Proverbs 13, 14, the scripture tells us that he's not only the way, he's not only the truth, but he's the what? He is the life. I like that picture there, don't you all? Deuteronomy thirty-two forty-seven says, <clears throat> For this is not a trivial matter for you on the contrary it is what life and through it you will live long in the land you are crossing the jordan to possess so it's not trivial it is important and proverbs 13 14 says the teaching of a wise man is a fountain of life enabling one to avoid deadly traps so yeshua is the way yeshua is the truth Yeshua is the life. The Torah is the way. The Torah is the truth. The Torah is life. And that would mean then, Torah is Yeshua, Hamashiach. In John 14, 6, Kyle, we're going there. John 14, 6. And then we're going to go to John 10, 30. John 14, 6. John 10, 30. And John 14, 6 says, Yeshua said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father 
except through me. So Yeshua says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Going back down a minute, uh, Kyle. And no one comes to the Father except through Yeshua. Or you can say it this way. The Torah is the way, the Torah is the truth, and the Torah is life. And no one comes to the Father except through Torah. Next one. John 10.30. Very simple. I and the Father are one. Yeshua and the Father are one. The Torah and the Father are one. Look at Psalms 119. Kyle, go back there. We're going to go to verse 97, 98. Then we're going to jump to 105. Psalms 119, 97, 98. And then we're going to go jump to 105. Psalms 119, 97, 98 says, How I love your Torah, and I meditate on it day, all day. And I am what? Wiser than my foes, because your mitzvot are mine forever. What will make you wiser than your enemies? The commandments, the mitzvah, and then meditating on them day and night. Psalms 119, 105 says, your word is a lamp for my foot and a light on my path. Or I could say, Yeshua is a lamp for my foot and a light on my path. Or I could say, the Torah is a lamp for my foot and a light on my path. So Simcha Torah is a time when we just bring out the Torah. <clears throat> you know, I had someone come visit one time and they were like, oh, I, no, that's, that's too much. And I was like... I think you're reading too much into it. It's, it's we're bringing out a Torah scroll, and we're happy that he gave us the word. And we're happy and excited that that word lives in us, and that word works for us. And we're thankful that he took that word and wrapped himself in humanity and came to show us how to live it. That's how, that's how not only important is it that it is, but it's also <clears throat> that's how he wants us to understand how to do it because it can be done. So he wraps himself, the word is wrapped in humanity, Yeshua HaMashiach, and he lives the word out to show us how it is the way, how it is the truth, how it is the life, and how it is the lamp and the light in our lives. Not only is Simcha Torah about bringing the Torah out, of course, but it's also about the beginning and ending of something. You know that Sukkot is the last festival of, of the um, biblical calendar, and it is a time when, a, a season of joy, it's a, it's a new moment for us. We, we recognize it's a combination of all the other feasts. That is the time when we are finished with running our race and we are now going to live with Yeshua forever. And he's going to tabernacle among us, right? So it's actually a new beginning. So it's actually the ending of something. And how many are excited about the ending of something? And the beginning of something else that's going to be spectacular, eternal, where he lives forever and where he is, uh, the government is on his shoulders. That, so if the ending is one thing and the beginning is another thing. And so in the lives of the Jewish people, they have diligently <clears throat> preserved the word of Elohim for more than over 3,000 years. If, if there's one, only one reason why they gave the Torah to the Jewish people is because they're meticulous about keeping it the same. And you saw that Torah scroll as it opened up, all those little Hebrew words and in those lines. If, if they got three-fourths way through that Torah scroll and, and that um, a sufferer uh, uh, messed up, the, the one that scribe who was writing it, if he messed up, they would have to do away with the whole Torah and he had to start all over again because they don't white out. They don't just fix it. They don't scratch it out and put it above. <clears throat> that every single Torah, which is why they're very expensive, every single Torah has to be perfectly done and then looked over again by another rabbi, making sure that everything is right before it even goes out to anyone because that word has to be true the same every single time. Wouldn't it be great if we just lived the word of God the same every single time and we took that moment of time to say, I want to follow this the way that God wants me to follow it, not adding nor subtracting to anything? And so Simcha Torah um, is, is a moment where it gives kind of jubilant expression to one's love of the Torah, 
Um, what does God say in the last day? That the, the love of God will be cold and Torahlessness <clears throat> will be running rampant, which causes apostasy, right? So coldness to the word. What do we see in, 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 in um, our churches and our kahilas? We see a coldness to the word of God. We, we, we enjoy um, community, but we're not as, we're not, we don't allow the word to impact us as much as relationship and fellowship with one another. <clears throat> we, and, and, and it's only because a lot of time it's the, you know, technology, and technology is great, but we also know that technology can be bad. You know, technology is good for our children, but then it gets overdone, and then our children spend all the time on technology, and then now they don't know how to interact with anyone because they interact on the screen. They don't know how to talk because they couldn't only text, right? And they can't do anything that needs hand paper because the, 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 the um, phones and the technology would correct everything for them so they don't have to learn anything, right? <clears throat> we, remember you had to learn everyone's phone numbers? If you're going to call them, you had to learn everyone's phone numbers. And today you probably don't remember a lot of phone numbers because you're like, well, I have it on my phone. And so the phone has taken, taken over your, your wisdom, your knowledge, your, your gaining truth. And that's the same thing with the Word of God. We used to carry our, nothing wrong, but we used to carry our Bibles every single service. We used to open up our Bibles. We didn't wait for the computer to say, Psalms 119, you heard the wrestling of paper. 119. And as a preacher, because I've been preaching a long time, you would wait till you stopped hearing the wrestling of papers because you knew that everybody was there, right? And you would say, I still hear people turning, so I'll wait, I'll wait, right? And then if that person didn't know where they were going, they just shut the Bible because they didn't want everyone to look, do you know where it is? And even that, you had to go to the front. You had to peek in the front sometimes. What page is it on? Where is Hezekiah? Whoops, there is no Hezekiah. But technology has helped us, and that's wonderful. But it should never stop us from loving the Word of God. It should never stop us from loving the Word of God. And, and this once a year is to remind us. Remember, everything is about a rehearsal with God. So even the Simcha Torah is to remind us the power of the Word of God, that it's the way, that it's the truth, that it's the life. It is Yeshua. It is, it is who God is. And we need to love it and meditate on it and eat it and devour it because it's sweeter than honey. Even sweeter than the honey comb. And so every Simcha Torah, they read Deuteronomy 34 and they read Genesis 1. So I'm going to take the time to have someone come and read it. Who wants to read Deuteronomy 34 for me? Come on up if you can see my Bible print. <clears throat> So Deuteronomy 34 is only 352 verses. Do you need glasses? The reason why they read Deuteronomy 34 because it's the end of the, of the Torah portions of the sequence. And then we're going to read Genesis 1-1. So maybe you can read Genesis 1-1. And that's the beginning. So next week starts Genesis 1-1. Because in the Jewish culture, they go through the whole Torah for one year. And then what do they do? They go through it again another year. And then what do they do? Start again. You say, well, it's quite boring. Well, we've been doing that for 20-some years. I don't think my Torah portions are quite boring, are they? I'm going to say it again so there's a little bit more excitement and jubilance and expression. I don't think my Torah portions are boring. Okay. See what i got to put up with? Go ahead. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 34. We're right there. Yes. Starting right here and go right down to there. Moshe ascended from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the summit of Pisgah, across from Jericho. There Adonai showed him all the land, Galad, as far as Dan, Naphtali, the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, the land of Yehuda, all the way to the sea beyond. 
the Negev and plain, including the valley where Jericho, the city of date Psalms, is as far away as Tor Zora. Adonai said to him, This is the land concerning which I swore to Abraham. Isaac and Yaakov, I will give you I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it in with your eyes, but you will not cross over there. So Moshe, the servant of Adonai, died there in the land of Moab. As Adonai had said, he was buried in the valley across from Beit Pi, or in the land of Moab. But to this day no one knows where his grave is. Moshe was hundred and twenty years old when he died with the eyes of undimmed and the vigor of undiminished people of Israel, mourned Moshe on the plains of Moab for 30 days after this. The days of crying and mourning for Moshe ended. Yeshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom for Moshe, had laid his hand on him, and the people of Israel heeded him and did what Adonai had ordered Moshe. Since that time, there was no, there has not arisen in Israel a prophet like Moshe, whom Adonai knew, who Adonai knew face to face. What signs and wonders Adonai sent him to perform in the land of Egypt, upon Pharaoh, all of the servants in the land, all his land, what might was in his hand, what great terror invoked before the eyes of all Israel. Thank you. Appreciate that. Good job. And now Genesis 1 1. <clears throat> Do you need glasses? No, I'm good. I didn't have the glasses. Let me show you. Okay, I'll show you. Am I reading the whole chapter? Or the whole chapter. All right, cool. In the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. The earth was unformed and void. A darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the surface of the water. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So there was evening and there was morning one day. God said, let there be dome in the middle of the water. and Let it divide the water from the water. And God made the dome and divided the water under the dome from the water above the dome that is how it was. And God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning. A second day, God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered together in one place and let dry land appear. And that is how it was. God called the dry land earth. The gathering together of water he called seas. And God saw that it was good. God said, Let the earth put forth grass, seed-producing plants, and fruit trees each yielding its own kind of seed bearing fruit on the earth. And that is how it was. And the earth brought forth grass, plants, each yielding its own kind of seed, and trees, each producing its own kind of seed bearing fruit. And God saw that it was good. So there was evening and there was morning, a third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, seasons, days, and years, and let them be for lights in the dome of the sky to give the earth light. And that is how it was. And God made the two great lights, the larger light to rule the day and the smaller to rule the night and the stars. God put them in the dome of the sky to give the light to the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So there was evening and there was morning, a fourth day. And God said... Let the water swarm with swarms of living creatures and let birds fly over the earth in the open dome of the sky. And God created great sea creatures and every living thing that creeps so that the water swarmed with all kinds of them and there was every kind of winged bird and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful, multiply and fill the water of the seas and let the birds multiply on earth. So there was evening and there was morning, a fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth each kind of living creature, each kind of livestock, crawling animal and wild beast. And that is how it was. 
God made each kind of wild beast, each kind of livestock, and every kind of animal that crawls along the ground. And God saw that it was good. And then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, in the likeness of ourselves, and let them rule over the fish in the sea, and the birds in the air, and the animals, and all over the earth, and every other crawling creature that crawls on the earth. And God blessed them. So God created humankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, and every living creature that crawls on earth. And then God said here, throughout the whole earth, I am giving you as food every seed-bearing plant and every tree with seed-bearing fruit. And to every wild animal, bird in the air, and creature crawling on the earth, in which there is a living soul, I am giving as food every kind of green plant. And that is how it was. And God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. So there was evening, and there was morning, a sixth day. Thank you. Thank you. Did you notice that he, was, he gave Adam and Eve dominion? And then when the snake came, Adam and Eve forgot to take dominion because they had dominion over the snake, but they didn't take it. A lot of times we get in trouble because we don't take dominion over that which... We have dominion over. So let me just say, what is the Torah? The Torah in English is translated as law. It's a poor translation. It should never have been translated law. The word comes from the root yara, which means to shoot, to aim, or to point to, and also from the root word mora, which is teacher. So the teacher teaches you how to aim. The teacher teaches you how to shoot. The teacher teaches you how to point to and get to the Torah. And what did Yeshua come to do? He came to shoot, to aim, and to show us. So the Torah is Elohim's instruction. That's what the word means, instruction. We have teachers, right? <clears throat> Retired, but a teacher. And uh, I say a teacher because Gail does not call herself a teacher. She's a speech pathologist, which is different than a teacher. So the Torah is Elohim's instruction to his people. And these instruction or instructions teach us how to live on this earth, how to get along with people if we just heed to them, right? But a lot of times our flesh gets involved. It teaches us how to, um, it points to us to eternal life through Yeshua. It lets us see how we can have salvation. It lets us see how his word was in flesh and perfectly embodied all of Elohim's teachings and that if we just follow Yeshua, we would follow him perfectly. So the Torah contains, and we read it in Psalms, all wisdom and instruction. And so if we're going to live healthy lives, how many want to live a healthy life? Um, happy life, successful life, a prosperous life, then this is what we have to recognize. And then we have to honor it. And so each year we bring it out just to remind you, you need to honor it. Look at Joshua chapter 1, 7 and 8, Kyle. Joshua 1, 7 and 8. Then we're going to go to Matthew chapter 5 and then John 5 and we'll close. Joshua chapter 1, 7 and 8. Matthew chapter 5, 17 and 19, and John 5, 39. <clears throat> Did you get him in your memory, Kyle? He's a young buck. I'd be like, what was it, Joshua, what? Someone go get those references from him. <laughs> Joshua 1, 7 and 8 says, Only be strong and very bold and take in care to follow What? All the Torah, which Moshe, my servant, ordered you to follow. Do not turn from it, either to the right or to the left. Then you will succeed wherever you go. Yes, keep this book of the Torah on your lips and meditate on it day and night so that you will take care to act according to everything written in it. Then your undertakings will prosper and you will succeed. Do you understand Joshua 1 and 7 8 is... The promise. If you want to live your life in a way that you're supposed to be prosperous and happy, that's it right there. So that means when we're not having those things, that means we're not living Joshua chapter 1, 7, and 8. We're living Jeff Myers chapter 1 versus whatever. And you're living your own chapters, right? And Yeshua clearly taught us in Matthew chapter 
5, verse 17 through 19. And you all know this very well. Don't think that I have come to abolish the Torah or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to complete. Yes, indeed, I tell you that until heaven and earth shall pass away, not so much as a yod or a stroke will pass from the Torah. Not until everything that must happen has happened. So whoever disobeys the least of these mitzvah and teaches others to do so will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys them and so teaches will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, that's just a promise of God. You don't do it just so you can be called great, but you do it because it's going to cause you to be successful. And I guess the reason why it's called great is because more people are not teaching it than are teaching it. And Yeshua said, my closing verse in John chapter 5, verse 39, it would have been 15 minutes, but the people who read took a long time reading. John 5, 39. You're in trouble. John 5, 39. You keep examining the Tanakh. Now, you know the Tanakh is actually the Torah, the writings, the prophets, right? <clears throat> what we would consider the Old Testament. You can also maybe even consider and put in the Gospels in there just because they are writings, okay? <clears throat> you keep examining the Tanakh because you think that in it you have eternal life. Those very scriptures bear witness to who? To me. So you can't say, I love the word and not love Yeshua. But at the same time, you can't say you love Yeshua and not love the word. That doesn't make sense, does it? That's an impossibility. So we are here to celebrate Simcha Torah. It's so nice to have with us our line of Judah 2 people, amen, who travels from afar. I'm sure they were singing. Their, their driver is Harry. He he loves taking them anywhere they want to go. <laughs> Harry says, uh, we'll talk about it when we get there. But we're, we're happy that you joined us, and uh, thank you for coming. We love, we love having you. Amen? So let's stand before the Lord. Let's have a, a, another time of, of worship or praise before we head on out. But before you head on out, because it's not the Sabbath today, we can go ahead and tear down um, that stuff out there, okay? If you can stay and help, that would be great. More hands, less work. Do I have an amen? Amen. Yahweh will go before us. Yahweh will make a way where there is no way. Yahweh will place our Yahweh has won the victory. Yahweh will go before us. Yahweh will make a way where there is no way. Yahweh will place our enemies under our feet. Yahweh has won the victory. Everybody shout loud and sing, prepare for war. It's not by power, not by might that we fight. Soldiers walking in the light, that's who we are. Come play your guitars, make it loud on the drums. Come dance before the Holy One. Prepare for war. Yeah.
has won the victory. Help tear it down if you don't mind. On Wednesday, I'm talking about uh, seed is revealed in DNA.